By 1800, the telescope had been in use in astronomy for about 200 years. One planet had been discovered, Uranus, and four moons of Jupiter, as well as moons of Saturn had been discovered. But uh, in 1801, something entirely different had been uh, discovered by uh, Piazzi. He discovered Ceres, and Ceres is the first and largest asteroid in the only asteroid uh, considered to be a dwarf planet. And the, uh, that discovery was followed only a year later by uh, the, another object, Pallas, by Heinrich Olbers. And this brought about a suggestion by William Herschel, who observed these, both of these objects, and found that they appeared as being very stellar-like, very much like a star, very uh, small in comparison to planets, which had the, when you observe through the telescope, you could see a disk, some kind of size. Uh, these objects were um, considered planets, however, for a long time, uh, during the 1800s by many. Uh, in 1804, Juno, number three, and Vesta was discovered soon after that. And um, many of these were found to be, uh, had this star-like behavior. They were all in an orbit between Mars and Jupiter, and they all were much fainter than uh, Mars or Jupiter, or the other planets. And by 1851, after the discovery of Neptune, which was clearly a planet because you could see the true, true shape of it, uh, 1851, there were about 15 asteroids were known, and the idea of an asteroid belt was established. That there was this group of, of objects that uh, probably were any, uh, many more were there to be discovered, and, and certainly that was indeed the case. Uh, 500 were discovered by 1903, 100 years after the discovery of the first one, 500 were known. By 1930, Pluto was discovered, and Pluto is now considered to be a dwarf planet in, a Kuiper, in the Kuiper Belt, the Kuiper Belt being another group of, of uh, large number of objects, in, but that one in the outer solar system, whereas the asteroid belt is between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, although there are other groups of asteroids. By 1981, 10,000 had been discovered, but 100,000 discovered by the year 2000. A remarkable number of discoveries uh, in light of the observations by photographs and electronic detectors. So there are uh, the main belt of asteroids, which all of the original discoveries and all of the large asteroids belong to, and there's also the other groups, the Trojans and the Greeks, the Hildas, and the near-Earth asteroids. The Greeks uh, and the Trojans are associated with Jupiter in position of an equilateral triangle with the Sun, Jupiter, and the center of the Trojan group. Another equilateral triangle from the Sun, Jupiter, to the center of the Greek group. These are the so-called Lagrangian points where orbits that uh, have the same orbital period as Jupiter around the Sun, asteroids can exist in these orbits in uh, stable orbits for quite a long time. The main belt is between Mars and Jupiter, or between uh, Mars and even not as far out as Jupiter, about half as, uh, about, about up to three and a half astronomical units. And the uh, Hildas are at the other point, the opposite 
point of Jupiter's orbit. And uh, many of these are in transition as they transition back between be being Trojans and Greeks in so-called horseshoe orbits. There are, is also the group of near-Earth asteroids or Earth-crossing asteroids. These are in here in the Apollo group. There are some other groups that are near-Earth asteroids. And those are the ones that pose the most danger to collision uh, with Earth. If we consider the relative masses of asteroids, most of the mass is in the first few discoveries and the, the largest asteroids. Ceres, more than a 25% of all the mass in all of the entire asteroid belt is, uh, is in that one object series. Vesta, number four, Pallas, second object discovered, and um, Hygieia contained that group of one, two, three, four contains 50% of all the mass of all of the asteroids in the entire uh, asteroid belt, hundreds of thousands of asteroids. And if we see a few of these others, then we can get even a larger fraction uh, over to here. All of this region here are all of the other hundreds of thousands of asteroids combined. So asteroids go over a very large range of mass and size. They are typically made of rock and metals, some, mixtures of rocks and metals, and sometimes uh, ices. Uh, and um, the asteroid belt is located in the region that we call the snow line of the solar system, which inside of the, the inner part of the asteroid belt is inside a region where the uh, water does not exist very often on surfaces because the sun's light is too intense. Out beyond that, objects are very icy. So the outer asteroid belt and outer, the outer solar system is a very icy region. So a lot of people think about the asteroid belt, they think about dangerous to fly through because you have all of these flying asteroids. Well, this isn't really the case. Asteroids are few and far between. But um, there are some interesting properties of these. There's a number of gaps. If we look at the distance from the sun in astronomical units, two being the beginning here, twice as far away from the sun as the Earth is. We have three over here. There are certain gaps in which there aren't any asteroids with those at those distances. And the reason is because there are resonances with Jupiter, that the orbit of Jupiter is such that it would pull on asteroids in at these particular distances, orbiting with very specific periods given by Kepler's uh, laws, that we would have resonances between Jupiter like three to one, and so these asteroids would be orbiting three times around for every trip Jupiter makes. That causes extra pull by Jupiter and pulls them out of that region. These are called the Kirkwood gaps after the astronomer that discovered these. On the trip to Jupiter, the spacecraft Galileo went by two asteroids, first 951 Gaspra, and we can see here an image of that that uh, looks very non-round. Non we do see lots of crater marks of different sizes and, and a definitely a very um, odd shape. Then 
after, so went by gas right here in the inner part of the asteroid belt and then came back around and then went through the asteroid belt on its way to Jupiter, reaching Jupiter in 1995. In 1991, it uh, took this picture of Gaspra. And in 1993, it took this picture of Ida, object 243, asteroid 243, Ida. And, it, and the, to everyone's surprise, Ida has a moon. And the moon is shown right here in the photograph, Dactyl. This moon orbits around uh, Ida, which is very strange indeed because not only do we have a moon orbiting an asteroid, but it's such a non-spherical asteroid at that. And that would think, you would think that that might be unstable, and, uh, but apparently we see that it is not. It is stable as we um, find this case. And so probably many asteroids have moons. In fact, many asteroids are not single objects. They are, they are two or three objects kind of clumped together in groups as they orbit around and they have been named as a single object because we have not observed it up close yet. Here's a couple of other asteroids that were observed by spacecraft are by the Hubble Space Telescope, and these uh, were uh, also show very similar kind of um, shapes, different non-round shapes, lots of marks from collisions from obviously smaller asteroids. So the uh, Hubble image of Ceres is shown here, Hubble Space Telescope. And it is the largest asteroid in the main asteroid belt. It's compared with four others. Vesta, which is the uh, second largest, number four discovered. These three are ones that I just took a look at. Gaspra, Eros, and Ida. Ida is the one with the moon Dactyl. For comparison, this is the planet Mars. And we can see that not only is Mars much bigger than Ceres and Vesta, but that Ceres and Vesta are much bigger than these other more ordinary sized asteroids. The other thing we can notice is that Ceres, and to a, uh, a lesser extent Vesta, although um, uh, in, this picture doesn't show completely the whole object, but these are much rounder objects, like Mars. So here's another picture of Vesta, and you can see it is round, and this is a shadow. This is because we can see the phase, kind of a gibbous phase. And Vesta compared with um, other ones like er Eros and Gaspra that we looked at before. This was taken with the uh, Dawn spacecraft, which is the first mission to look at asteroids up close, specifically Vesta and Ceres. So here is the space telescope image of Ceres. Here is the Dawn spacecraft on the way to Ceres. So it's not there at, the, at this time of this picture, but we could already see that the picture is better than the Hubble Space Telescope image. So the, really the only way to see these asteroids is up close uh, and personal by spacecraft. Here's the closer in and notice that Ceres has many craters. It looks a lot like the moon in that respect. There is a very striking white group of white features. Uh, that are in, indicative of ice and the nature is really not known uh, at this point. 